Hello everyone, it's Valerie from Shellbrook Handcrafted Soap in Moser River, Nova Scotia. And today I'd like to show you um, a hot process soap, high temperature, and how I do it for putting it in my molds. My silicone molds, and uh, that's some of them. And what I'm going to do actually is I heat up my molds to about 150 degrees, 170 degrees, either in your oven. I'm going to put mine in my Breville toaster oven, and so that when I go to put my hot process soap, process soap in there. These will be hot as well. And it just, I find uh, the hot process soap conforms better to the mold. Uh, this formula that I'm showing is, uh, I call it my tapioca hearts. And um, it's made with a very simple formula. And it has uh, some tapioca starch that I mix with a couple teaspoons of cold water. And I whisk that in at the very end of, uh, after it's Vaseline stage. Then I'll mix that in as well. And uh, it's just going to have one ribbon of an in-the-pot swirl color of uh, titanium dioxide, so it'll have white in it. And I'll show you how I use a soup ladle to uh, scoop out my hot soap and pour it into those hot molds. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Uh, it's going to be super fatted at 7%. I super fatted up front 5%, and I'm going to super fat 2 more percent after the cook. So when I do my formula, I'll put in the super fat section on soap calc, I put 5%. When I print my formula off, I take the total amount of my oils and butters and I multiply that by 2%, which gives me one ounce of extra super fat I add after the cook. Uh, sometimes I'll do totally different ratios in that and that would be up to you. Um, this has water in it and aloe vera juice and coconut milk. It has about six ounces of coconut milk, three I'll add in the cook and three I'll add after the cook. It also has a couple of uh, tablespoons of apple cider vinegar that I mix up with my sugar and maple syrup and um, my aloe vera juice is 2.25 ounces and I actually save one ounce of that to mix with my sugar and maple syrup as well. I did completely dissolve the sugar and then I'll add it hot after the cook. It also has 5% sodium lactate, and it has three, this is a three pound batch, and it has three tablespoons of yogurt in it. And all of that information as well will go in with the formula when I post that on there. So I will be showing the cook on this, and uh, I just wanted to give you a heads up right now. My, um, I'm heating up my oils, and then I'm gonna mix my lye, and I have all my other add-ins over on my stove, keeping warm. And um, I'm going to bring you back when I go to add my lye, and I'll take you through the different stages, although I probably won't show the entire cook. I'll just turn the video camera off and turn it back on when it's pertinent. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, so we're back with the tapioca hearts high temperature hot process. I'm just getting ready to put my lye in. Uh, my oils aren't extremely high uh, in temp, nor my lye. The lye is 183 Fahrenheit and the oils are 170 Fahrenheit. And even though it's still in the crock pot, the crock pot is turned off and I'm gonna strain my lye. Just in case there's anything in there that doesn't get, uh, sometimes pieces of lye don't get stirred up right. I have found uh, this looks pretty good this time. And to make sure to wear your safety gear, gloves, and uh, I actually have a pair of glasses, um, safety glasses, I'm going to put on. Anytime you're working with lye, cold process or hot process, make sure you wear safety gear. And uh, be close to where you can get water to wipe it off. So, excuse me a minute, I'm going to stick blend that up. And uh, while I'm doing it, I'm going to add uh, three ounces of hot coconut milk. bring that to a thick trace and then I'm going to cover it over.
Let's stick blend that a bit more. So that's at a thick trace. I'm just going to scrape that batter off. I actually use these, uh, they're called sp spoonicellos, I think they're called, or spoonellas. And they're like a spatula and a spoon scoop on them. And I got them from Micah's and Moore's, Steph's Micah's, and they're fantastic. I use them for uh, all my soap stuff, for cleaning out oil containers, and they work fantastic. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover this up with saran wrap or plastic wrap and I'm going to make sure it doesn't get stuck to this part, just to the adobe part. And what that does is it helps to keep the moisture in and to keep it still hot so it's still working. So that's in a crock pot and it's off and those were the temperatures that I used and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to time it for five minutes. It could uh, cook in three but you always anytime you're cooking at high temperatures you want to keep an eye on the batter all the time because depending on your formula uh, how much stearic acid is in it and how much palm you use and things like that, your hard oils versus soft oils, uh, it will cook faster than others. Um, so we'll see what happens and I'm going to show you actually the stages. Uh, there's something else I was going to tell you about, uh, about this, about uh, the reason I add yogurt, I actually add yogurt to all my soaps or 99.9% .9 of them and it's a tablespoon per pound is what I use and I add it at room temperature or cool after the cook and I whisk it in and s some of that yogurt will convert to sodium lactate uh, which is really good for your skin and it also helps to make the soap more manageable uh, for layering uh, etc and um, I'm also adding in this formula I'm adding 5% sodium lactate and sodium lactate is great for aging skin, it's a great humectant, but it also helps to harden soap and it helps to keep it manageable while you're working with it. And um, so I'll be adding that room temperature, a bit lukewarm probably, <coughs> excuse me, after the cook. So right now I'm going to turn that camera off, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and if... Uh, something happens before five minutes are up I'll bring you back so it's been five minutes and nothing has happened yet so what I did with my crock was I turned it back on to warm and um, when your batter isn't quite hot, hot when your oils and your lye are quite hot enough then you won't always have that reaction Now I'm sure if I waited seven minutes I would have had a reaction because I've done it before uh, but for the purpose of this video, I turned it back on to warm, and uh, I think you'll see something happening there within three minutes. So I'll bring you back in three minutes. So I wanted to show you that um, three minutes, nothing had happened. So I put it on for another two minutes, and this is what's happening here. As you can see that it's cooking and boiling. Is a little bit hard on top so I'm just going to stir that all in and uh, basically what's going to happen to this is going to become applesauce what I call applesauce stage 
and I'll just cover it back up again once I get this stirred. You don't actually um, have to keep your crock pot on now because of the heat in that. That will continue to cook. That's about 217 Fahrenheit. And uh, of course it depends on your crock pot. And you can see that there's still pieces of uh, soap there that hasn't from the thick trace. But that'll definitely cook. And right now we have applesauce and some of that thick batter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that up and I'm going to let it go another three minutes and I'll bring you back. And right now this is on warm. It's been two minutes and uh, I can tell that it's cooking here so I'm just going to whisk that up and I'm just going to take the temperature for myself. Okay, it's about 219 and uh, my crock is on off and I'm just going to whisk this all up and actually you can see right there that it was applesauce but now it's, it's turning to potato. And uh, we might get a volcano out of that where I whisk that up. But I'm going to just keep an eye on it there. So now we're at potato stage. And it won't be much longer. And that'll be Vaseline stage. And that's what we're looking for is Vaseline stage. I'm just going to cover it back up and my crock is on off. I'm just going to unplug it too. And uh, I'm going to leave it uh, probably about another two or three minutes and I'll bring you back and let you know. It's been one minute and I can see that this is cooking. And I'm going to turn that down, stir it down, whisk it down. And I'm actually going to take that right out of that pot because I don't need the heat from that anymore. And right now, that is what I would call thick Vaseline. And I'm just going to let that set. I'm going to turn off the video and I'm just going to let it rest about three minutes. And when you come back, I'll start adding the super fat and other things that I'll tell you about when you come back. So we're back and we're at thick Vaseline stage and now I'm going to start to put my super fat in uh, which I heated up so this is my super fat and then I have three tablespoons of sugar, a tablespoon of maple syrup with two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar and my ounce of aloe vera juice that I saved from the initial liquid. I'm going to whisk that in. You can see that's really thick, but that's because I had saved a fair amount of liquid to add afterwards. About four ounces, I think I saved over the initial amount of liquid. You can see that's still quite hot. It's 
about 197 Fahrenheit right now. And I think what I'll do is I'm going to, because I don't like to add my yogurt and stuff and that's too hot. Everybody's different, so you can do it how, how you like. But I'm going to let that set another three minutes. And I'll bring you back and I'll add the rest of the, what I'm going to add. So here we are back and I'm going to finish adding the rest of my ingredients. Now this is my 5% um, sodium lactate, my 3 tablespoons of yogurt, and I do not discount my sodium lactate from my liquid. And the yogurt, I don't discount that either. So I'm just going to add this in and whisk it up. So this is 3 tablespoons of 5% fat plain yogurt. You want to make sure you whisk that in really good. If your batter's too hot and you don't get that whisked in good, sometimes it can cook. And I know because it's, it's actually happened to me. And then I'm going to add my coconut milk in as well, which I've heated, which is the other bit of my coconut milk. Um, the fragrance oil that I'm using today is called Rice Flour Shea. I, it's one of my actually all-time favorite fragrance oils. It's beautiful and it, you can use it in a lot of different blends as well. But this is just uh, two ounces of Rice Flour Shea for this three pound batch. And it just leaves a beautiful fragrance in it. Um, I sell a lot of this formula this soap with that fragrance and it's well liked by my customers and the tapioca starch for me it just adds a silkiness to the soap and um, what I do is I have one and a half teaspoons of tapioca powder and I'm going to add two teaspoons of water I don't heat this up and then I'm, I will mix this in with a whisk because it's pretty temperamental. And then I'm going to add the fragrance as well. I'm just going to stir this up really well so it gets all mixed in. And that actually that water there is uh, just room temperature. And depending on where you live, like we live in Nova Scotia which has a lot of snow, so it can be cold this time of year. So I'm just going to whisk that in. And then I'm going to add my fragrance oil, which uh, I heated up to warm. And sometimes your fragrance oil or your essential oils will have a tendency to thicken up your soap batter too, but don't, don't be too concerned about that. Once I get this all whisked in, I'm going to let it set for about five minutes. You don't have to do that. I happen to like doing that with my batters. And that has thickened up some, but no worries. So I'm going to cover this back up and I'll see you in five minutes. And I have my, one other thing is I have my um, silicone molds heating up right now at 150 Fahrenheit. So they'll be hot when I go to pour this. Hello everyone, we're back and I'm going to start to pour these. Um, Brian, can you check my husband's videotaping? I just want to check to make sure that uh, you can see me pouring this. So what I'm going to do right now is um, I had my ladle over here in hot water. So this is my soup ladle. And uh, what I'm going to do with this, I'm just going to put out some to color it white. And I'm going to do an in the pot swirl with that. 
just uh, just to give it an, an off color. I actually shouldn't have put that in there yet because I wanted to stir this around, but we'll work around it. So this is my titanium dioxide, and I'm just going to color that. So that uh, titanium dioxide was mixed with distilled water and uh, probably less than an eighth of a teaspoon of glycerin. So I'm going to mix that up and then I'm going to drop it into that natural color batter and I might just put another teaspoon of hot water in this to loosen it up a bit more. That's a tip that you can do if you just want to loosen up your batter or even half a teaspoon. The hot water can loosen that up right quick. So. I probably really didn't need it after looking at that, but. And then I have uh, some warm water in this spray bottle, because sometimes I'll use that when I'm doing the tops. Soaps. Okay. So then I'm going to do this. I guess you can see how pourable that is. And uh, I won't mess too much with that. And then I'm going to take this spoon and I'm just going to do a couple of turns because I don't want it too much. Maybe right there you can really overdo it. Oh yeah, one of the other things I wanted to say was, before I brought you back on camera, can you get me this? I uh, tested the pH on this, and there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do it with phenyl, um, the phenyl drops, or you can do it with pH strips, or you can do a tongue zap. And uh, so here's one of my molds, and basically what I'm gonna do is just scoop it in there and uh, like this. Can you see that, Hans? Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll get too much, I might have to spoon it back out. By the looks of that, I sure do. I'm just going to cover that up. And um, we'll take the spoon and scrape some of that stuff off. Because I got way too much in those. So when I was talking about uh, the spray bottle, what I'll do with these is just spray this top and I'll just do a curly Q design in those. You certainly don't have to. The design does come out once it's hardened. And I'll take a knife and I'll fix those up as well. Okay, and we'll set those ones aside. And I'll do another group. Try to be a bit more exact with these.
and I'll show you pictures of them after as well once once they're hardened and what they look like just to have to take a bit off here scallop one. Before I actually punch these out, I'll probably put them in the fridge because having them in the fridge actually uh, helps them to come out of the mold good too. What I'll do is I'll just leave that and save that for myself. There's some left in there, but I'll make that up into a puck because I love this soap. I love the way it smells too. It's just beautiful. Okay, so where's my spray bottle? There we go. And uh, thank you for watching. And I'll upload some pictures of these out of the mold, and you'll see what they look like. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy the formula. Bye for now.